It's the 65th meeting between Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, a game that will feature two of the most dominating backs in the NFL. For Cincinnati, it's Corey Dillon closing in on another 1,000-yard season. And for Pittsburgh, it's Jerome Bettis. Hopes to be full speed after springing a knee five weeks ago against the Colts. Bengals and Steelers next on CBS. Subway presents Fresh Starts. A salute to this season's surprises. Subway, eat fresh. Start spreading the news. The New York Giants are in the playoff hunt. Kerry Collins leads the NFC in passing yards, while rookie tight end Jeremy Shockey had 11 receptions last Sunday. The New York Jets are also back in the playoff race as Chad Pennington is the AFC's highest-rated passer after throwing four touchdowns last week against the Lions. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Did you know his favorite color is green? Did you know he has a pet ferret named Ricardo? Do you know every time he sees the sunset, he cries? So how do you know he likes his food made this way? Come on. Subway makes every sandwich just the way you want it. Hey, Kisa. Hi. Everyone's unique. That's why Subway makes every sandwich fresh just the way you want, with your choice of delicious meats, toppings, sauces, all on fresh baked breads. How do you know I have a ferret? I have my ways. Subway! We saw snow flurries Friday and Saturday today. However, clear skies. What a day. 45 degrees at game time. Important game for Pittsburgh. They own a half-game lead over Cleveland in the AFC North. Browns with a tough road game today against the Saints. The head coach is Dick LeBeau in his third year with Cincinnati. Bill Cower in his 11th season with Pittsburgh. Now, each time they meet, LeBeau gives Cower a candy bar. And, Craig, this week it's a, it's a butterfinger. <laughs> You think he's wanting to give that butterfinger to the <laughs> Jerome Bettis and somebody to drop a ball? <laughs> Pittsburgh will receive. Steelers 5-4-1, lost to Tennessee last week, 31-23. Season low, Craig, 45 rushing yards for Pittsburgh. Cincinnati 1-9 coming in. They lost a tough one at home against Cleveland, 27-20. Numerous miscues in a game they could have shoulda won how many times could you say that about him though underway in pittsburgh taken at the 11 yard line antoine randall good return they'll mark him at the 32 yard line offensively for pittsburgh cordell stewart replaces the injured tommy maddox at quarterback played well remember in relief last week in tennessee had two fourth quarter touchdowns. Jerome Bettis, he's a load at 256. Says that knee is about 90%. And Heinz Ward is having another Pro Bowl type season. His 10 touchdown catches lead the National Football League. The numbers on Cordell this season, over 700 yards passing, takes the snap underway. Bettis, the ball carrier, maybe a yard, spikes the linebacker. Number 51 makes the tackle. Well, let's set that Cincinnati defense. Up front, Justin Smith is a star in the making, but really struggled last week against Cleveland. The Keo Spikes anchors that linebacking core, averaging over 10 stops a game. And Artrell Hawkins is the stopper in the secondary. Craig, a second-round pick back in 1998. Double tight set for Pittsburgh. Second down after the three-yard pickup by Bettis. They stay on the ground. Bettis makes a nice little cut, picks up a couple of yards to the 37. Brian Simmons, the middle linebacker, in on the stop. Yeah, you talk about the Bengals' defense, and, and they, no question about it, Jerome Bettis has had an outstanding career day every time he plays the Cincinnati Bengals. I think 10 out of 13 games against them, he's had 100-plus yards. They're playing with that safety in Cincinnati today as an extra linebacker. So either way they go, that safety's going to roll free or strong coming up to give an extra man in the box. Third down and four. Stewart from the shotgun. Four wide receivers set. Stewart, good protection. Underneath, first down, Pittsburgh at the 43-yard line. Randall L. making the reception. The rookie out of Indiana. Remember, he had a great career as a quarterback. For the Hoosiers, second round pick. Yeah, and you know what? Hawkins, the corner, can't really keep the inside away from Randall L just because he's so quick. That's such a high percentage efficient quarterback right there, passing ball, because you know that he's going to only have to throw it five or six yards, and those are the kind of plays that Stewart's comfortable with. 
Amazing that Randall L has made the transition from quarterback to wide receiver in a very short time. Quick hit, near side is complete. Burris, number 80. Three years out of Michigan State, a former number one rounder. Uh, yeah, watch the, uh, what I want, you know, you talk X's and O's and all that stuff. Uh, today, the field conditions are going to play a huge part. Watch the slipping right here that goes on, both from wide receiver and the defense. This football field is like a sand pit out there. Walking on it in pregame, I just can't believe you could have such an outstanding facility and yet have a terrible playing service. I know it's been well noted. Leslie Visser said on the NFL today they're going to replace it after the game today with more sod, but they've got to deal with it for the next 60 minutes. Reverse coming around the other way. Hines Ward, he's got blockers at the 40. Ward at the 35, 30. Hines Ward at the 20. Ward inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Justin Smith made the touchdown saving tackle 39 yards on the in round for Heinz Ward a pro bowler a year ago it, it, you know what you want to do is you want to watch white jerseys to find out who's staying at home and staying responsible there is a huge steel curtain over here right inside look at all the black jerseys six on two I mean razzle dazzle this and that that's the way that the Steelers hit big plays with Cordell Stewart as the quarterback First and 10 at the 13-yard line of Cincinnati. High formation. That is the ball carrier. He'll lose a yard back to the 14, and riding him down is Brian Simmons, the middle linebacker. Mm. Boy, did he fill the hole. Oh. Hey, and you know what? With Jerome Bettis running the football, you better go get him before he gets going and gets you. His calves, watching him in pregame, I mean, I've known Jerome a long time since he was in college. It looks like he swallowed two bowling balls and they went down to his calves. <laughs> And I was looking at him like, holy mackerel, dude. <laughs> Coconuts down there. Last week just had four carries for six yards against Tennessee. Seventh play of this drive. Second and 11. Stewart wants to run now. Tucks. He's so dangerous at the 10. Inside the 5. Stewart to the two-yard line. Simmons again covering a lot of ground for Cincinnati. Makes the stop, and Stewart now with a 12-yard gain. That's the one thing. Tommy Maddox is so good in the pocket, reading defenses, but this is what Cordell Stewart does so well. This is double bad for the Bengals because the Bengals had eight men up there to stop the run. You would think that they would be up there to support and to control and contain Stewart. They're inviting the pass there. To allow him to break out and have a big run like that is unacceptable. First and goal at the two-yard line. Bus close inside the one. Bettis at 256 pounds, 10 years out of Notre Dame. And you know what? I'd be willing to bet if I got around the weight room or the training room on a scale that, that 256 would be on the light side. Is that being kind? I think that's being kind. Well, the bowling balls must go at least well, 16 that, pounds a piece. A piece. So you got 32 <laughs> just below the knees. There's Tommy Maddox. On the sideline, remarkable that the man is even up and in a uniform after what happened in Tennessee last week. Cordell Stewart taking the reins in an impressive opening drive. Back to Bettis. Walks in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. And Craig James, that's exactly what Cincinnati feared. A quick start to get this crowd very much into it at Hines Field in Pittsburgh. Hey, you know what? That's just a simple play. Left guard, Panica comes around. Watch your left guard pull. He comes. They totally collapse the Bengals' defense. They're balled up in there. And, and, and we saw the ball-up effect not work on the reverse to Hines Ward. And it certainly didn't work there either. New kicker, Jeff Reed, with the extra point. They brought Reed in. For a tryout along with four others on Wednesday. He won the battle, replacing Todd Peterson, who's on IL with ribs. There's the big bus. Rumbling. 7 0 Pittsburgh. So, field in Pittsburgh. The Steelers go 68 yards, nine plays, 526 off the clock, and Jerome Bettis runs it in from a yard out. Seven rushes on that drive, Craig. 58 yards and a nice third down completion to Randall L by Cordell Stewart to keep the drive alive Brandon Bennett back to receive the kick from Jeff Reed Taken at the seven 
Bennett up the middle he goes. Hits a wall still on his feet. Bennett tripped up and dropped at the 33-yard line. Man, that guy's a load. 27-yard return. Kitna and company will have it right after this. Hell on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 37. AXA, your future, your way. And by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Welcome back. 7-0. Pittsburgh Steelers are 70-17-1 under Cowell when they score first. This is a big offensive series as Dylan stiffs arms his way for a yard at the 35-yard line. They struck early last week, you remember, in that game against Cleveland. Chad Johnson with a 72-yard uh, touchdown, and let's set the offense for you for Cincinnati. John Kitna, the quarterback, making his seventh straight start. This offense has made huge improvements under Kitna, but not in the win-loss category. Dylan's the workhorse in the backfield. Needs just 112 yards to hit the 1,000 mark for the sixth straight season. And how about Chad Johnson? He's the young talent and had that big 72-yard touchdown last week against the Browns. Second down, seven. Dylan up the middle, not much. Tough to run against the front of Smith and Hampton. And let's talk about that Pittsburgh defense. It's a 3-4 set up front. Former Bengal, Kimo Von Olhoffen, anchors the right side. Nine-year pro on a Boise State. Good linebackers. Anchored by Joey Porter. Leads the team with seven quarterback sacks. And Dwayne Washington is the right corner. Part of a secondary that ranks 27th against the pass. Kitna must take advantage of that today. And I think tempo is important today. I, you know, I wouldn't be afraid at all or surprised if the Bengals try to go to a no-huddle effect. They need to throw the ball. They've got to do something different to put the advantage on their side with the players on the field. Four wide receivers for Kitten on third down and five. Five-step drop, good protection, up and over. First down, Cincinnati. Ron Dugans, number 81, three years out of Florida State, picks up 19 and a first down for Cincinnati. You know, an excellent job of, of from the right side of the field coming back to the middle. They drag underneath low, then they take Dugans and come over the top at about 15 yards. Pass protection, very important there. When John Kitna has the time to throw the football, Kitna can play. This is a good quarterback. I really have grown to like him in this film study that I've done. Dugan's in motion from the eye, handoff. Dylan trying to run it right up the, the heart and soul of Pittsburgh. Brett Alexander, the free safety with the tackle. Log on to NFL.com and help pick the NFL's all-star lineup. Cast your vote for the 2003 Pro Bowl squads now only at NFL.com or on America Online. Simply enter keyword NFL.com. You see Alexander come up that safety and, and hitting Dylan in the hole. You got to do that, but you got to understand at some point in the game between Bettis and Dylan, they're going to wear those safeties down. Lorenzo Neal, the lead back for Cincinnati. Kitna wants a throw. Hooks up around the 30-yard line to his tight end, Matt Schobel, the rookie from TCU. Fiala, the inside backer with yeah, the tackle. Yeah, and you know, here's the, here's the linebacker he's working on. Watch how Schobel, once he gets down the field, they kind of battle each other. A little pushing off there, but Schobel wins the battle there and slides back to the outside where he's got the opening. Again, do you see Kitna with the time? Yep. He, knew he, he knew the matchup he wanted, where he had it, and waited on him to get open. Ten-yard pass play, first down. Good drive here for Cincinnati. Throws the quick out, incomplete. He wanted Chad Johnson. I'm not sure where Johnson was going. He had the out, looked like he was going to the up. The, the, he slipped out there. I mean, looked like the out and the up, and Kitna threw it to the out. I mean, maybe they're off pace there, but you definitely don't want to throw the out ball when your receiver's doing the up ball. And the, cor and the corner's sitting over there. <laughs> that has the potential to have dirt going the other way. You know, the last six games for Kitna, 242 yards a game, 10 touchdowns, 9 picks. And he's completed nearly 70% of his passes. Lorenzo Neal. Only his eighth carry in Pittsburgh. Stayed at home, played their lanes, and drops Lorenzo for about a two-yard loss, led by Joey Porter. I think it kind of surprised Porter. Watch Porter when he comes back to the inside. Watch how he's got his pursuit angle there. And he's, hey, what, hey, you're supposed to be a lead blocker. What? <laughs> What are you doing with the football? You know, it's kind of surprised him. And, and you know, Lorenzo Neal is, is just an outstanding player. So is Joey Porter. And, you know, those two guys get together. They'll hit a lot today without the football involved. Crowd, very vocal. 
Steelers up seven. Cincinnati trying to convert on third down and ten. Kitna in the pocket throws. Dugans maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, he took a pop. They're going to mark him at the 29 and a good hit by Chris Hope. Brings up fourth down. And for whatever reason, I, watching these kickers in pregame, it didn't seem like the ball wanted to travel. I know it's 40, 45 degrees here today. The wind's not really that bad. But, you, you know, this, just watching them kick, I wouldn't have a lot of confidence to send my kicker out there to hit anything around 45, 50 yards today. It just didn't seem like the ball was traveling that well. How about Dick Laveau? Why not? You're one and nine, Craig. Kitna looks to the sideline. Laveau gave him the signal. Fourth down and nine. Five, 11, clock running from shotgun formation. Kitna. Throws the flat complete. Dylan made the reception short of the first down at the 24 yard line, and the free safety, Alexander, got him low, and that's the way to bring down Corey Dylan. And sometimes, you know, a quarterback needs to kind of override the system and get away from his check down. You know, that time they gave him the underneath ball, they knew they could get to him. Bad decision on Kittner's part. Welcome back to Pittsburgh. Craig Bowler, Jack Craig James, our CBS crew here at Heinz Field. Steelers with their second offensive series. They scored the first time down. Bettis off the right side from one yard out to make it 7 0. Cordell Stewart in for the injured Tommy Maddox. Impressive drive. Opening series. This drive will start from the 23 yard line. Bettis chopped down at the 20. One of America's most enduring images, the Goodyear blimp, is floating overhead, providing our aerial views for today's game. The Spirit of Goodyear is one of three airships in the Goodyear blimp fleet. This is some great pictures. What a great day in Pittsburgh. We saw snow on Friday, little flurries yesterday with some wind. It was cold, but today, very nice. We came dressed for the occasion. Whatever you need to have today, you better have it, because <laughs> it was ugly Friday, Saturday. Loss of three for Bettis. That brings up second down and 13. Stewart pumps, pressure, shovel pass to Bettis. Big fellas on the move to the 35, maybe the 36-yard line. Artrell Hawkins chased down Bettis. A pickup of 15. Uh, kind of a different way to get to the screen. You know, they're going to roll to the left tackle, left guard. They're going to get to the right side. So you can't do it overhanded. So you little shovel it to the screen pass, you know? Nice job. That's the athleticism. And, and, and when you see a guy like Stewart make that kind of play, that lets you know that he just is out there going for it. Whatever. He's not worried about making a mistake. He got the ball to bet us. Cordell, 3 of 3, passing for 25 yards. Yeah, he told us in our meetings, hey, I'm relaxed. Maybe this is a little bit of an audition. A lot of general managers around the league looking for quarterbacks if it's not going to work out here in Pittsburgh. Throws deep. Cut! Down the sideline is Ward at the 20. Touchdown, Pittsburgh! Ward told me during the middle of the week, he said, you know what, I've got total confidence that Stewart's going to be able to come in and play the game and do it well. Not only is this a well-thrown ball, it's an outstanding job of going and catching the ball behind Ward. Case Varhorn goes underneath, made a mistake. Varhorn tried to, Case Varhorn tried to make a big play. He came up and made a big play for the Steelers is what he did. An extra point right down the middle and a quick 14-0 lead built by Cordell Stewart. Hey, the Blue Birds aren't here yet, are they? No, I hear cheers. Yeah. Along CBS is sponsored by T-Mobile. Get more minutes, more features, more service. And by Miller Lite. Life is best told at a place called Miller Time. Back in Pittsburgh, the Steelers with a touchdown from Bettis from one yard out and then a 64-yard pass play from Stewart to Ward. And just like that, 14-0. Jeff Reed the kick. Bennett awaits. Good kick. Drives him back to, to, to the two. Bennett 
Heads outside at the 30. Bennett at the 35. Good return back to the 37-yard line. 36-yard return. Stewart and Ward up by 14. Bill Cower and the Steelers up by 14. You know, Pittsburgh is 71 1 and 1 under Cower when the Steelers get off to a lead of 11 or more. It bodes well indeed. Kitna, good, good catch by Hushmanzada, but a flag is down in that backfield. Holding. Offense, number 72, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. And, and, you know, with the Bengals, when they get something going, you know, a nice big play, you get a holding call. And you talk about the, the Steelers, you just mentioned the record under Coward when they get an 11-point-plus lead. They don't lose very often. So you, you, you talk about a team, they've got to understand it, the psyche on the other side. You've got to open it up. I, I believe going into this and told John Kitten in our meeting yesterday, I said, John, why don't you guys just go no huddle, go to the line of scrimmage and throw it 25 times in a row. He said, hey, I'd love that to be a quarterback's dream. Why not? What have you got to lose? A team that's one and nine, two wideouts near side. Kitna shuffles the feet, throws, it's caught. Nice little spin by Warwick. Peter Warwick picks up some extra yards on second effort. They knock him out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Dwayne Washington. Washington on the stop. The right corner. You know, Kitna is just a, a guy that he's got so much composure when you visit with him. He's got he's got everything that you talk about. It, they just can't get over the hump. You know, when you get your ball club down last week, they can't get in the end zone to score a touchdown to tie the football game. A couple weeks ago, they can't get in to go ahead in the game. It's, it's a total team effort. He's 5 of 6 in this game. It's not a bad start for him. But being down 14-0, they're going to lay their ears back on you. Second down and 12. High formation. Kittman feels pressure, runs out of the pocket, and hook slides maybe a yard. Well, tonight on 60 Minutes, while it may surprise you that the FBI isn't all it's cracked up to be, it won't surprise you that Billy Crystal is. Both stories tonight on 60 Minutes. Now, the one thing the Steelers' defense has not been able to do is get off the field on third down. You know, third, whether it's third and one or third and 12, they have had a hard time, and it has been a bad problem for this football team getting off the field. The, the offense has had a lot of success. If that happens today against the Bengals, there'll be some heads rolling. Third down, 12 for Cincinnati, four wide outs. Kitna throws, nearly picked off, reached in, knocked it down, was Washington. Good, good defense by the right corner. Nine years on a North Carolina state. And you, you're able, if you could dissect this play compared to the last one where Heinz Ward had the touchdown, watch how Washington's arm reaches through the receiver. He completes the reach. He completed the bat. Case Varhan, when Heinz Ward was out there, he didn't. He alligator armed it. He wasn't as aggressive with the reach. That's the difference between being a nine-year veteran and being a rookie. Nick Harris with the punt, and it's a good one. Antoine Randall L pedaling back 16-yard line. Heads to the near side. Flags are down. And Randall L knocked down at the 37-yard line by Brandon Bennett. 47-yard kick and a 22-yard return, but a flag at inside the 30. Holding. I've always said that that when you start strong early, it leads to sometimes sloppy play. During the return, holding, receiving team number 39, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Pittsburgh keeps the ball. First down. Well, Monday on CBS, it's an all-new night of America's best television, starting with the King of Queens, followed by Yes, Dear, Everybody Loves Raymond, and the new number one comedy of the season, still standing. Then don't miss TV's number one new show, CSI Miami, plus The Late Show with Dave, after your local news. Monday, it's loaded up here on CBS, America's most watched network. The bus... Jerome Bettis, no gain as Whittington made the tackle. That eight-man box, though, you know, it's been effective. The, the plays that hurt the Cincinnati Bengals defense, as they told us last week before we did their Browns game. It's the gimmick is what they call it. It's the misdirection. Hines Ward, the reverse early. The first series of the game goes big. 
The misdirection plays are what's hurting them. The quarterback breaking out of a pocket when you've got eight men up there. Those are things that you just you've got to make the play. Under a minute left in this opening quarter. Bruner, the tight end in motion. Play action. Stewart tucks and runs 25. Boy, he has speed. First down at the 31 yard line. Case Foharn making the tackle and Cordell Stewart with a fine opening quarter picks up 11 on the ground. Danged if you do, danged if you don't. What I mean by that is a linebacker or corner in the secondary, you're danged if you come up and support early on a quarterback scramble because he'll throw the ball on you. If you stay back, he hurts you with his legs running the ball. And what does Stewart have to lose? He knows that this is kind of a one-week deal for him. If he gets nicked up, so what? He'll have some time on the bench. Bettis. No gain at the 31. Brian Simmons slashed through to make the tackle. Good pursuit by Cincinnati. That ends the first quarter here in Pittsburgh with the score. Steelers up by 14. We'll return to Heinz Field right after this message. Second quarter here in Pittsburgh. Steelers up on Cincinnati. 14 nothing. Bettis got it going with a one yard plunge and then Ward goes 64 yards to make it 14 nothing. Steelers with a big first quarter 156 yards of total offense and they have the football again second down from the 31 Stewart near side ball batted down flag comes in case for Harn the left corner number 34 You know what, though? At least he reached through there. That's that time. interference. Defense, number 34. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. You, you know, the time before, he didn't finish the play, and Heinz Ward went the distance. At least he comes through that time. The problem with it was he had his right hand on his hip, and he pulled himself through. Those officials are looking for that. This is a young man that has a, a, an incredible story that we can share with you through the game. But, I mean, where he's come from to where he is now is an awesome testimony to not giving up now he's learning how to make plays and not make plays eight first downs for Pittsburgh Bettis sneaks into the backfield and Stewart finds him underneath they're gonna move the chains again at the 48 yard line of Cincinnati Simmons and spikes there's Jerome you know we talked to him in length yesterday incredible guy 10 years Notre Dame he's one of those fighting Irish and boy he's fighting back from a knee injury five weeks ago against the Colts and he's a, he said he told us about what 90 percent he thought the knee was going to respond today so far a good start Stewart quick drop pumps now spins and runs Cordell at the 50 picks up a tough yard to the 47 yard line for an update let's go back to New York Here's Jim Nance. Jim. All right, Bowler, an update down Miami way. The Chargers and the Dolphins, a pair of divisional leaders, and the Dolphins get on the board here with McKnight hauling in a 20-yard pass from Ray Lucas. 10-3, Miami with four seconds to play first quarter. Back to you. Thanks, Jim. Juan Stat and uh, Schottenheimer, pretty good coaching matchup today. And what a turnaround for San Diego this season. Got an injured Bengal down. That's Glenn Steele, number 70, left tackle. They've had some problems, mm. Craig, too, Boy. up front. They lost Oliver Gibson, yep. big number 99. And now Steele, though, is up. Steele six years out of Michigan. Good run stopper at the point of attack, but it, you know what? Them losing Oliver Gibson uh, is, is not good. And then you lose Steele, perhaps. You know, Hopefully he can come back for them. He walked off, but... This Bengals defense, they're not big and strong and physical. They, they have to rely on athleticism and movement and getting to the ball and pursuit of the ball. But the over-pursuit at times is what's getting them. That's a good player right there. He can play the game, Mr. Justin Smith. He set that Bengals rookie sack record last year with eight and a half QB sacks. Second down, Pittsburgh. And the Cincinnati 48 yard line. Stewart dumps underneath, little pitch and catch. Kreider, the fullback. Stewart's having his way. Yeah, well, he got drilled that time. 
Let's go back to Jim Nance, New York City, NFL Today update. Jim? All right, this is an update from Baltimore and Tennessee. And Hendrick, for the first time in 560 punts, he's blocked. And Ed Reed, the rookie who celebrated a little too early two weeks back, not this time. Touchdown, 10-0 Ravens. Let's go back to Craig and Craig. Jimbo, that guy, he learned to tuck the ball and hold on for a while, huh? Run to the, run now, down to the goal post and then celebrate. Yeah, wait till you cross the goal line. Yeah, Dion needs to work with that guy. Tell him how to do it and when to do it. <laughs> Cordell, 6 of 6 for 111 yards. He's hit five different receivers. Stewart, plenty of time. Coming back on the throwback was Burris, number 80. Plexico Burris, three years on a Michigan State. They are picking on right now Kevin Caseforhan, the left corner. Jeff Burris has had some migraines, number 21, the starting left corner, and Caseforhan out, out of Augustana has been playing a lot of reps the last couple of weeks. Yeah, he just didn't know where he was going with that deal. They drove him off and then went back to the outside. And this rhythm of this offense right now, totally controlling the pace of the game. Sure, they're putting some pops on Stewart, but... He's showing a lot of courage. The dump off to Kreider. Knew he had to hold on to it. Gets drilled. This one here, he allows the play to develop. Cordell looks good. Eighth play of this drive. Mixing things up. Draw to Pettis. Well, he starts to run downhill. You can just see guys back off to the inside the 15 to the 14. Hawkins finally came up to hit Bettis. Hawkins, by the way, around 190. And maybe we were kind to Jerome saying it was 156. How about, about I mean, 256? How about 270 right now? No, I wouldn't doubt it at all. But, you know, the vision. Look at the hole, though. This is a great hole. And when those safeties have to come up in corners and making plays eight yards down the field on Bettis, that's a bad day for you. Need just 16 more rushing yards to move past OJ for 11th all time. John Riggins is next in line. Quick throw, incomplete. Off the hop, Burris couldn't bring it in. Stops the clock with 11.23 left before halftime. Well, coming up on the next L Halftime Report, make sure you join Jim, Dion, Dan, and Boomer. All the scores, all the highlights, plenty of stuff going on right now. That's coming up on the next L Halftime Report. Old Coward, so he and I were sharing, we both had the same roommate one time, Joel Patton. It, you know, we didn't play for each other, but we had the same roommate. We were sharing roommate stories, and yeah, we, <laughs> we had some good times together. Just didn't know, it's kind of like we're in the same fraternity. <laughs> Flags are down. Anything you can share? No. <laughs> that's that, that's what was so. so bad about our conversation. Before the ball was snapped, ball start. Offense, number 73. 73. Five-yard penalty, still third down. You know, I, Bill Cower, the, you just look at the wins that he has, and it's quietly occurred. I say quietly. I mean, they, the guy's been around, and he's doing his job, but he's just so committed. His tenacity. He's a former player that understands the little things about getting ready. On the field, prior to the game, they're stretching. They're warming up. He goes up to every player, and he's giving it to them. And he's giving it to them with some passion. You know, I know a lot of head coaches talk to their guys, but I mean, just... His approach to how he handles his team and right now how he's handling his quarterback situation yeah. just shows you why he's won so many football games. Only 45, Craig. 11 years, the longest active coaching tenure with one team. Well, this day and age, that's remarkable. Stewart wants to throw a dart complete at the 15-yard line. Short of the first down, but boy, some steam on that ball. Randall L. made the catch, but Cincinnati's defense finally puts the stopper but now the field goal unit comes in. And, and the reason these fans are cheering is they're wanting to find out how Reed's going to do. You know, it's almost like they're wanting to experiment with a new toy out there, right? You know, Todd Peterson on the IL with a rib injury. He missed a couple of field goals last week against Tennessee. Went wide right from 31 and 37. So they bring in a four kickers, and Jeff Reed, the rookie from North Carolina, wins it. This will be from 33 yards. Good. And look at the reaction here in Pittsburgh. Kicking game, a sore spot of late for Bill Cower. Reed from 33, and the lead is 17. <laughs> 17 nothing. the lead now for Pittsburgh. Jeff Reed just kicked the 33-yard field goal. How about 11 plays, Craig? 67 yards, 547 off the... The clock and Cordell on the drive was four or five passing from 42. 
He tucked and ran twice for 12. At the 11-yard line, Brandon Bennett. Well, he's hit and dropped at the 25-yard line. Big hit. Brett Kiesel. Big number 99 with a special teams tackle timeout, and we'll be back. On CBS, he's sponsored by Cadillac. Bold vehicles defying conventional. Zenith, the ultimate authority in high-definition TV. Digitize the experience. And by Heineken. It's all about the beer. Heineken. Cincinnati down 17. And they go back to work. Kitna hands it off to Corey Dillon. Lake flag in on the pile around the 30-yard line. Mm, holding again. John Fiala, the inside backer for Pittsburgh with the, with the stop. Ed Hockley, using some of those biceps he has. That's a 25-yard chunk. You know what I was, I was counting offense, that. Number 89, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Now this week on The Late Show, Dave's all new with Everybody Loves Raymond's Ray Romano, Jack Hanna's Animals, Liza Minnelli, and George Clooney. And don't, and Monday, don't miss Lisa Kudrow, plus all new stupid pet tricks. It's all new all this week on The Late Show with Dave right here on CBS. You still have that dog? Don't you know it's not supposed to be nice to say stupid to somebody? <laughs> What dog? That puppy I got? Yeah. Yeah, and he eats up my backyard, my flowers. I catch him. Better call Dave. My wife's freaking havoc on me because of that dog. First and 18. Nothing for Dylan. You know, that's the one thing that Pittsburgh talked to us about. Kimo Van, Van uh, Olhoff and said, you know what? Corey is basically the best in the game. We got to make him bounce. And right there's a good example. So you stuff him up the middle. You stop the momentum. You start and you make him shuffle. And right there, you can't get the momentum back. I think, you know what, the Cincinnati Bengals getting down early like this, they're playing with no cleats in their shoes. I mean, this is a, this, it was a no-brainer. They had an emotional loss last week against Cleveland. And for Dylan to have three carries and seven yards just lets you know where their team is right now. Four wideouts, Kitna fires. Well short of the first down. Dugans make the, made the reception. Now you bring up a great question. Uh, you know, here's a team one and nine. They did. We were in uh, Cincinnati last week, and they did put it on the line against Cleveland. Very emotional game. A game they could have won, should have won, but it was just numerous miscues. And Kitna told us in that meeting last week it was all about just one or two plays. Six inches this way, six inches the yeah. other. And it was almost like he was looking into a crystal ball. Yeah, I'd almost say it's more not one or two. It's probably four, maybe five plays a game. Third down and 10. Caught first down, Cincinnati and more. Peter Warwick on the run. Spins and tackled at the 39-yard line. Chad Scott chased him down, but I see a flag at the 35. Holding on the old Steelers. They didn't hold him enough. I, you know what? Kitna throwing the football. Illegal contact. Defense number 26 before the pass. The penalty is declined. The play results in a first down. You know, I just I feel like when, when the Bengals put the ball in, in Kitna's hands, that he can throw the ball and give them some big play opportunities. And Wark is one of those guys who's had the up and down. He'll sometimes drop a little ball that he should have caught. But he has the ability. Chad Johnson, we haven't heard from Johnson yet. Johnson said most of his catches would be to the middle of the field because they'd be trying to take him out, doubling him on the outside. First down after the 37-yard game. Now that opens up a little room for Corey Dillon. Throws the stiff arm. You see him switch the ball. He's still got a little emotion, some fire in him. So I don't know if the cleats are out of Corey Dillon, but a good hard run of nine yards. Yeah, last week, he almost uh, filed his uh, cleats down after not getting in the end zone into the game that would have tied it with Cleveland. He and running backs coach Jim Anderson had a, had a little heart-to-heart -heart uh -huh. on the sideline. And Coach Anderson was my coach at SMU when I was a freshman, so I know he knows how to give you a little heart right back. I think Coach Anderson was probably saying, Corey, you missed the hole. And it probably was not that cleanly said either. 
Huh? No, that's that's the nice version. <laughs> Nose of the football signal first down Cincinnati. 836 left before halftime. Pittsburgh with 75 yards on the ground. Cincinnati was 17. I think we expected Pittsburgh's rushing attack to have those kind of numbers, although a lot of it came on Heinz Ward's reverse. But I don't think we expected Corey Dillon to be down to 17. No. Or less. Lorenzo Neal in motion. First down, Cincinnati. Play action. Kitten up. Pressure. Throws up and over the middle. Caught. Another first down and a good grab. You said, where's Chad Johnson? He says, here I am. Number 85, the second-year pro out of Oregon State, made that boastful, boastful statement last week. We will win against Cleveland guaranteed, not quite. Yeah, and he also said in that meeting, he did, you know, I'll catch most of my balls early on in the middle of the field. They're going to try to double him on the outside, but this guy has had one heck of a season, and the fact that he's he's getting a big yard, you know, it, it's just not an isolated deal. He has the big play, big strike capability. First and goal, just inside the 10-yard line. Corey Dillon walks in, touchdown Cincinnati. Corey Dillon, 10 yards, and a Bengal touchdown. Well, just like that, they're down the field. You know, and, and you talk about a team that needed some of that. Chad Johnson on the eight, outside, number 85, he gets to the middle and has an excellent block. And then Corey Dillon gets to the corner, and you, you saw Corey go down on his knee and talking about Hart looking up into the sky. and and. He does have heart. You have to have heart to have back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back seasons like he does always coming through and not giving up on a team that can't win. Fifth rushing touchdown for Corey Dillon, the three-time Pro Bowler. Neil Rackers in to try the extra point. 19 of 19 on the season. And now make it 20 of 20 in the PAT department. Now the question is, can that Bengals defense show up? You know what? Can they come out and stop the Pittsburgh Steelers offense? The offense for the Bengals has answered the call. One day in the life of technology. Pittsburgh leads by 10, and overhead today is the Akron-based blimp spirit of Goodyear to provide aerial views of today's ball game. The Goodyear blimp. A familiar sight in the American sky since way back in 1925. They got a great day here in Pittsburgh to be flying around the air. This is a, this is a stadium in a city where an aerial view really you, you can enjoy it. You appreciate it. Short kick at the 15-yard line. Lee Mays going the other way. High steps out of a tackle and chased out of bounds. They will mark him out at the 38, and a late flag flies. Yeah, you know, the Bengals uh, special teams have been good. And uh, not doing it right now. Real Johnson comes in and just can't quite get all the way over there. Comes on top. And I was almost like he hit the top of yeah. his helmet, though, didn't it? That that forehead patty. Face mask by the yeah, receiving he, he team. 15-yard penalty. Ooh. First down. 23-yard return plus 15 Correct more. And the kicking team, the kicking team. Impressive start here in this first half for Pittsburgh. Uh, you know what? The, 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 when you talk about the, the, the drives, the nine, the 11 play drives, you know those are all long match. scoring. Was by the kicking team. I think Ed got turned around. <laughs> Which way did he go? Correction. <laughs> I said it the first time. 15 yards, <laughs> first down. Oh, he got a chuckle out of it. <laughs> That's good stuff. He had it right, had it right the first time. <laughs> Pittsburgh up by 10, 17-7. This drive starts at the Bengal 37, 47-yard line. Venice. Hard running, maybe a yard to the 46. Justin Smith making the stop. Had no tackles last week against the Browns. Some pressure, had a couple of pressures, but did not record a tackle. But he's one of those havoc guys. Yes. You know, he, he's wreaking it somewhere. And, and you and offensively, everybody knows where he, 
that he's on the field. He's moving. He's going to be there somewhere around the football. Second down nine. That is the lone back. Cordell Stewart. Tucks heads to the sideline smartly at the 41. Out of bounds. Lamont Thompson, the free safety. Had him on the run. 648 left. That stops the clock. That, that, that's a free design play right there. That's a run by the quarterback all the way. Number 80, Burris on the outside. He comes back to the middle of the field like he's going to run a crossing route, but he's just coming inside the block. That's a design play to take advantage of Cordell Stewart's leg. So, you know, all of a sudden you pick up five yards, and it's just another way of, of creating doubt and, and, and making defenders run around the field covering the whole thing. Four carries, 29 yards. 131 passing. Three wideouts, far side. Got a busted play. Looked like he was going to hand it off to the fullback, Haynes, the rookie. And then Stewart was forced to tuck and run. First down. Justin Smith with Mighty the tackle. Close. Mighty close. Mighty close. You may have spoke too soon, you wise men. I thought I had a good spot, but then the. Yeah, but it wasn't your feet going out there. It's true. I, huh? I, I only got to size 11s. I think there's. Well, I, you know what? I, I'm not so sure. I don't think they missed it. I think this is another predetermined play that Cordell Stewart's going to run the yep. football. And they're just going to fake the draw, and he's going to follow the fullback up in the line. Man, not all, not I missed all it. Sure, you missed that big. <laughs> good. I missed it bad. Yeah, you missed that one bad. And, and let, let me tell you why they're punting here and not going for it. The Bengals offense came out and had a successful drive. This is a smart move by Bill Cowher. Play field position on these guys right now. Don't even give them a chance to get back in the game emotionally and with field position. Josh Miller into punt. You don't win 100 and something games like Cowher has making poor decisions too often, do you? Very few. Of course, you know, yeah. I mean, I mean this guy, he may come out and run a fake punt. Who knows? But I'd play field position with him. Push Manzada and Jeff Burris back to receive. Push Manzada, remember, had that fumbled punt, which would have given Cincinnati fine field position late in that game with Cleveland. Play clock uh, runs dry. They want the five yards. You know, one thing in the NFL, why can't you just say, hey, you know what? Give me the five. I, I'm with you, man. Give back, me the five. Just back it up five yards because I'm going to sit here and waste your time and mine. Make, we're going to make that a booth up there, figure out something to say for the next 30 seconds. And the late game, <laughs> offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Oh, that's just nuts. Little extra room for Josh Miller to work. Third flag against Pittsburgh. Cincinnati's been flagged four times. High, high hanger. Hushman Zada will let it go. Going to take a Pittsburgh bounce inside the five. That extra five yards came into play there, didn't it? You're not kidding, but a flag is down around the 48. Ooh. Looks to be against Cincinnati. I believe they needed six for the first down. Coach LeBeau, don't do it to me. You know, this is going to have to, was it, did the hold, I'm sure, I'm, I'm, I, did the hold occur before the transition, you know, over so that, you know, was it, were they offensive or defenses when the when the when the holding occurred, right? Yeah, we'll get the call. Holding, holding by the receiving team number 90 during the kick. The ball is enforced from the end of the kick. Cincinnati keeps the ball, first down. Yes. Number 90, Justin Smith. So a timeout here in Pittsburgh. 523 to go before halftime. CBS is sponsored by Saturn, makers of the View, redesigned L-Series, and the all-new Ion. 
And by TGI Fridays. At Fridays, try one of our delicious menu items tonight, like our double glazed baby back ribs. Cincinnati down 10. They have 523 to work with before the half. They start this drive deep in their own territory inside the five of the three. Call it the two-yard line. Play action. Kipna throws. Completes Chad Johnson in Cincinnati with a lot of breathing room. A pickup of 17. Chad Scott made the tackle. Next Saturday, your favorites are back, giving it their primetime best when Scott Hamilton returns to competition as Olay presents Ice Wars USA versus the world. It's all next Saturday at 8 Eastern here on CBS. For more, go to CBSSportsLine.com. America Online, simply enter keyword CBS Sports Line. Corey Dillon tries to shake a tackle. Good pursuit by Pittsburgh. Drops him at the 19. Casey Hampton, the nose tackle. Big number 98 getting the 320 pounds moving. Oh, man, I watched him in pregame warm up. I really like Hampton. When he plays in the middle of the field, you got to really have him, this big unit here. Watch how he moves his feet. He keeps the blockers off of him and gets to the outside. Hey, for that big a man to get the outside like that, that's, that's impressive. That's scary is what it is. It is. A number one pick a year ago out of Texas. He's got that low center of gravity, something you and I don't have. He just looks like he's got a low center of gravity. He's just all gravity. <laughs> Second on nine, Kitna throws. Man coverage, push, no flag. Right off the numbers, it hit Chad Scott right on the three and the zero. It's, uh, and and there, that's a lot of interesting hand work here at the end. You know, there's a little hand right there from Scott. A little hand goes back to him. It's nothing. Just slipped. He just slipped. That turf just it cost him the ability to come back underneath. This is one of those games as a player, you have to play it like it's almost a muddy field. Yeah. You must stay off your heels. You've got to stay on your toes. Using those front cleats, not the back cleats. Kitten not at 12, 123 yards, third down and nine. A quick throw, and it's caught by Dugans. First down, the drive continues. The clock under four minutes. Joey Porter with the tackle. Last week, we saw Dugans and, and some of these guys dropping third down passes. They weren't converting. You notice there, Dugans, who I think has three receptions now. He caught the ball. It's his fourth reception. He catches the ball, and he got straight up the field. You know, don't dance around and lollygag around out there. Get up the field. Get your first down. Move the chain. Four catches for 43 yards. New downs for Cincinnati from the eye. Play action, Kitna. Stand side arms. Clearly intercepted. Kendrell Bell, number 97, two years out of Georgia. He was an NFL defensive rookie of the year a year ago. And, and he's and Kitna just said, come back to the ball. Don't don't fade. Don't don't slide. Don't get depth. And that's what he was wanting there. He didn't want Shovel to go back. You know, those, those linebackers, they call it that intelligent angle, that smart angle. They cut underneath as soon as they see you go out there. They're going under that pursuit angle. And they want the receiver. The quarterback does. He wants that receiver doing the same. Well, you know what Bell was uh, smelling? He was smelling the easy six. I mean, it was wide open to the end zone. Play clock down to two. Gets it off. Second down, ten. Dillon has not really, except for the ten-yard burst for the touchdown, has been able to really roam much between tackles in this first half. The Steelers have done a nice job of, of bottling him up, you know, and, and really inviting somewhat to throw. And why not? Corey Dillon's Corey Dillon. You know, you must focus on him. And at this point right now, Casey Hampton, that defensive line, and the linebackers are controlling the line of scrimmage and taking things away from Dillon. You know, Von Olhoffen and also Joey Porter played high compliments to Corey Dillon. Von Olhoffen said best in the game, and Porter said he's the millennium running back. Speaking of Dylan, from the shotgun, third down, Kitna throws up and over, caught. Nice grab, Chad Johnson on his run, on the horse at the 30, the 25-20. Chad Johnson inside the 15. And down after the throw is Kitna. Fifty five yards on the hookup and you know what the plate took a long time to develop quarterback knows He's gonna get busted when he does when he does get rid of the football But look at the way he stays in the pocket 
He waits, he waits, he waits. He just gets sandwiched. He gets hit low really hard by Lee Flowers, and there wasn't any gift to go backwards. He couldn't go back. He's a thick, strong quarterback. 220 pounds, he's 6'2". I mean, he's a thick quarterback. You know, but how about how about the focus of Johnson? You know what Chad Johnson told us in the, in the meeting? Uh, make sure you're listening now. He said after a drop a few weeks earlier against Indianapolis that bummed him out big time, he made a commitment that he was not going to drop another ball this season. And so that kind of determination, it, knowing you've got a big play coming your way, if you'll hold on to the football, it's why Chad Johnson's becoming a go-to guy. Three receptions, 91 yards all this quarter. You saw Gus Farratt, who started this season as Cincinnati's starter with a couple of war, uh, quick warm-up tosses on the sideline. He takes over for Kitna, who took a shot right to the midsection. And Cincinnati, all of a sudden, making some noise here in Pittsburgh. 17-7, coming up on the two-minute warning. I formation, Lorenzo Neal, Corey Dillon in the backfield. They get the playoff, Dillon the handoff. Flags are down, Dillon stacked up and dropped at the nine. Big time holding. So Farad goes out, Kitna holding. comes in. Offense number 74, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. That's the two-minute warning with 1.57 on the clock. They goes already, huh? Yeah. Kitna got his breath back, and he'll be quarterbacking. We'll be back. 57 left before half, and Cincinnati down 10, but very close to the end zone. Craig Goldjack, Craig James, let's open this up. Kitna's played well. Well, the, the Bengals' defense finally came out and made a stop for the Steelers' offense, and then the Bengals' offense responded up from the two-yard line. They got a drive going here. They're finding the middle of the field, and that's where Chad Johnson thought they would be able to find him. Kitna throws incomplete over the head of Dugans, 81. Kitna officially just had the, the wind knocked out of him. I just say he had the crap knocked out of him. Huh? I mean, that, he got busted pretty good there. I mean, he, he got, I mean, and you know what? What happened was there was no room for him to go back. And these plays, when they happen like that, you just feel like, oh, my goodness. And it doesn't look like a violent hit, but you know as a player that you just have no give. There's no cushion. There's no give to it. Now 11 of 16, 194 yards. This is the ninth play of the strike. And remember, it started at the two-yard line. Kitna sets up and throws inside the five-yard line. And a great grab by Chad Johnson. First and goal, Cincinnati at the two. Boy, don't you like the enthusiasm of him? I mean, he goes up, he works back to the inside, and again, when you go back to the middle of the field as a receiver, the expectation that I'm going to get drilled is there. And, and for him to have the focus, and that focus up, I'm not going to drop another ball, is coming through. Four catches, 110 yards, and it's in the middle of the field. That's where they've got the opportunity. Play clock running down to two to one. Timeout, Cincinnati. And Cincinnati That's will take a timeout. timeout. Actually, third down and call it a yard and a half. We'll be back. 108 left, Craig Bowler, Jack Craig James. You're thinking Corey Dillon inside the five-yard line. They've been here, you know, twice in the last three weeks. You know, Corey Dillon has not been able to get in. That right side of the line hasn't been working. You know for a fact the Bengals have worked on this short yardage goal line situation with the best running back they think in the league. They got to get it across. Third down and short. Dillon straight up the middle. Second effort. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Corey Dillon, two yards. Well, that's heart and soul right there because he carried Steelers in with him. They didn't bounce it outside. They didn't run behind Willie Anderson. They went right up the middle behind Goff and Braham. I mean, he just carries them in. He gets below their pads. I mean, he that is an outstanding effort in a run by Corey Dillon. All of the emotions you saw from Corey Dillon last week, he did not want to revisit those. Second touchdown of the day, one from 10. That one covered two yards. Rackers, the kick. 
And all of a sudden, Cincinnati down 17 with 14 unanswered. And what do you hear? Heinz Field. Indeed, the Boo Birds out. We'll be back. What's going on here? I think they got the big head early, uh, the Steelers fans and the Steelers. Bengals have answered the call, though. I'm telling you, John Kidna can throw the football. Chad Johnson, he's got, and, and Peter Ward catching the ball with Ron Dugans has made a difference in the passing game, allowing it to open up. Otherwise, they just focus on Chad Johnson and take him out. They also have T.J. Hushman Zada. Schobel, pretty good tight end, rookie out of TCU. He's got the weapons. And you got a Corey Dillon in the backfield. Short kick inside the 30. Pittsburgh, good field position at the 34-yard line. Coming up on the Nextel Halftime Report, make sure you stick around. Jim, Dion, Dan, Boomer, busy day. They've got all the scores and all the highlights. That's uh, coming up. Nextel Halftime Report. Craig, that drive started at the 2. 98 yards goes Cincinnati in 10 plays. 419 off the clock. And Kitten on that drive, 4-7, 106 yards. And it all started, though, on third down when they stopped Cordell Stewart short and forced the punt. It was zero way in the backfield now. Four wide receivers, three to the near side. Little swing underneath pass. Big yards. Justin Smith chased down zero way. And Pittsburgh will call for a timeout with 48 ticks left in this first half. Well, that's hard for Amos Zeraway sitting on the sidelines the whole first half, then to come in and, and catch a ball, and you're running down the field, and all that blood starts flowing to your muscles, and you get tight. And that's a tough task for a guy who, over the last several weeks, has had a chance to go out and rush for a couple hundred games. I mean, and uh, when you talk about the footing in this game now, I mean, there have been some players who have slipped, but for the most part, it's been played a lot cleaner than I thought it would have been. No problem there. Well, at the end he did, but I mean, he was making a dramatic cut back to the inside. You know, Leslie Visser joined us here uh, in Pittsburgh, had a story about Tommy Maddox in the NFL today, and I did mention that the Rooney family did announce they're going to make some uh, saw changes right after this game. Cordell Stewart back to work. Throws, zero away, nice open field tackle. Artrell Hawkins, you cannot map it out any better than that. That's that Bengals defense inviting that underneath throw, trying to take away the middle of the field and the outs. Crowd, you hear a little restless here at Heinz Field. Under 30 seconds left from the shotgun, Stewart. Quick drop over the middle, caught. Or dropped. Had it, and then uh, incomplete. Burris, quiet first half. A couple of catches for 20 yards. Mark Roman, the free safety, providing some coverage. Bill Cowher will have his uh, hard hat on at halftime because they've lost their edge. They came out so strong that they just kind of lost their edge. You know, they're not as sharp as they were. And, you know, when you jump 17, nothing that happens. In three series, touchdown, touchdown, field goal. And now Cincinnati has responded with a touchdown from Dillon from 10 and a two-yard run by Corey Dillon to make it 17-14. Shotgun is Cordell Stewart. On the run, leans to the 42, calls for the timeout. And Justin Smith, I believe, lost the hat. I guess, I, I guess Cordell uh, thought he had the first down to make the call the timeout there because what that does is, is really allows, you know, an extra timeout over Cincinnati's part, and it stops the clock and forces them to punt the football. Watch Justin Smith, number 90, in his rush up the middle. As soon as he gets there, he starts peeling back in a pursuit lane. You know, this is what's happened throughout the ball game is that he's realizing and expecting that Cordell Stewart's going to run, and it's why he was able to fall back down the field and make a tackle. Look at the timeouts. Pittsburgh with one remaining. Cincinnati with two. Fourth and short. Stewart has talked it over with Cower on his way back to the huddle with 11 seconds remaining. 
Pittsburgh, Craig, this season on fourth downs, pretty good percentage of 64%, 7 of 11. But I don't understand this here. If you go for it and you don't make it, then they have two timeouts and the ball here and one or two completion. One completion down the middle timeout, you might be able to kick a long field goal or attempt one. Rackers, by the way, looking ahead to Cincinnati. He's kicked one from 54 this season. Hines Ward in motion. Stewart shotgun throws. Caught. Out of bounds. A first down. Burris lost his footing. And six seconds remain. And look at that. Plexico Burris hobbling a bit after that catch. Very nice pass. Great pass. He's on his toes. Now goes to his heels. You know, that's where you pull a muscle there. He probably did. I mean, that's a, that's a, that is a tough, if it is an injury, it's a tough thing to have to deal with because you're slipping on grass or really sand. Grass is being kind to it. You took the walk down there. I mean, and you made an interesting point. You have to play this game like it's a muddy field. Final timeout burned by Pittsburgh. Well, if he, if he makes this, if he makes this and he was playing possum, Reed, the kicker, I mean, this young man did not have that in him in the pregame, for sure. He's already made one from 33. Todd Peterson, who's gone uh, this season, field goals missed last week. Wide right against Tennessee, 31 and 37. He had uh, some ribs that were bruised. They put him on the injured list, so Bill Cower brought in four kickers, auditioned, and Jeff Reed won. And also, it's always Tommy Maddox who holds Craig. Josh Miller, the punter, is going to hold. So you got a bad field, a new, a new holder, and a new kicker. And he's going for it from 51 yards out. He could become a nice uh, Steeler favorite around here in a quick, short turnaround. Huh? In a heartbeat. Miller, the hold. The kick is away. Line drive. No. There's one second left. One second left. One and second Oculus left. saying there's one, one second, second left, telling left. everybody to go back. One uh, second is left in the half. Bingo's already headed to the locker room. Watch his left foot. Watch his plant foot. See that slide? You lose, you know, when you slide 12 inches like that, you're losing your power, your your accuracy. And he has on these little Direction. soccer cleats. The half cleats. is over. The you know, half is over. I think Ed, Ed, Ed just wanted to go have a couple hot chocolate. Let's go for it, guys. <laughs> Let's burn that final second. <laughs> Interesting half. As you see, uh, Cincinnati on their way off the field. Dick LeBeau, one win this season. Cower, not happy. They were up 17. Cincinnati now down only three. Jim Nance will be along from New York with an XL halftime report after this message. And a word from your local station. CBS Tonight. Becker has a new patient with multiple personalities. You've heard of fun, haven't you? It's what people... CBA Sports presents the Nextel Halftime Report. Nextel, bringing you wireless solutions. And we welcome you back. Good to have you with us from our Fifth Avenue studios. The Nextel Halftime Report. Jim Nance here along with Dan Dion and Boomer. You can join us this Thursday as we present our traditional Thanksgiving Day NFL game with the Lions hosting the Patriots. It all starts at noon Eastern with a special edition of the NFL Today. Thanksgiving is about family and football. Pierce to the left side, Richards wide right, here's Longley, he's gone for all the marbles for Pearson, he's open, caught, touchdown! It's a first down kick, and it's blocked! It's blocked and rolling around at the 10 yard line! Jimmy Jones got the block and no one, yes! Oh, oh he got left! Sanders slips a tackle inside the 50. 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown to Barry Sanders! But before the game on the NFL today, Leslie Visser has the story of Patriots offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss. He's back with his family, back in football after fighting for his life. And Lions rookie quarterback Joey Harrington with his keys to success. Marcus Allen has that story. Plus at halftime, a live performance by Bon Jovi. Isn't Thanksgiving the day to stuff things? It's Joey Harrington. You better watch out. out. 
better indeed, and we look forward to having you with us. Oh, I don't Thanks like that. Today. That's laying down the law right there. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, folks been enjoying this game. Nice little comeback mounted here by your Bengals. Hey, no give up by the Bengals. John Kitna leading them back. But how about the defense? Where is the defense in Cincinnati? You know, you got to stop Cordell Stewart, stop Pettis. You know, and shut them down. The offense is doing enough. All right, let's take everybody around the league and uh, check out the action. Uh, well, first, though, let's take one look back at that Heinz Ward, his 11th of the season. Well, this is what I'm talking about. You can't miss tackles like that and let guys go down the sideline without anybody touching you. I mean, the defense the has got to be there. But here's Corey Dillon. Hey, Cincinnati fans have seen this play way too often fail. Finally, it goes in for a touchdown, 17 to 14. Bengals are hanging tough. All right. Miami, meanwhile, hosting the Chargers, a pair of divisional leaders, and it's all Miami in that first half. And here's Ray Lucas and Jay Feeder talking about where they want to go to dinner after the game. And Drew Brees drops back to pass. Gets under a little pressure. The ball's tipped. Zach Thomas interception, big turnover early on in the game. And then Ray Lucas dropped back to pass, gets some man coverage right here. Touchdown to James McKnight. Puts them up 10 3 there. I would think a couple of Dolphin quarterbacks would say, let's go to Marino. Hey, why not? You know, why not? Good, I hear it's a good food there, baby. Get Buffalo and the Jets. There, <laughs> and Curtis Martin's all over 100 here early in the third quarter. Yeah, it is. I'll tell you what, but it's all about Drew Bledsoe throwing a couple interceptions. Here's the first. Sam Garns makes it off of a tip pass. And then John Hall kicks a field goal, but Chris Watson is called for running into the kicker. Jets get another opportunity on this drive. And they hand it to Lamont Jordan for a one-yard touchdown run. I think Curtis Martin has gone over 100 yards up to this point, yes, Jim, as they start the second half. Yes, 101. And Curtis Martin is the story in this game for the Jets. And the story in this one is Brady. Three touchdown passes as Minnesota's looking to add now to its losing streak on the road. They've lost 15 in a row, although they did get the last score there in the half of Culpepper touchdown pass. Browns at New Orleans, two-minute mark. Saints are at the five, though, threatening to go in here. You don't want to throw this pass right here. Jerome Payton. Oh, right oh, oh, hit by Brent. Boy, you boomer. <coughs> Payton's mom and them mad, man. Mom and them. Mom and them. Right here, you see William Green goes up the whole cut right. How many does he get, boomer? 16 yards. Green for 16. Then on the next play, guess what? Green up the hole. Green for is ground. One. on the ground. That's your whole audible thing. You did the whole audible thing. Yeah. Atlanta and Carolina. Carolina just throw it out there. Out. Well, you know. right, Atlanta been already once a, a shutout winner over Carolina and shutting them out again today as Vicks posting huge numbers over 200 yards throwing in the first half. Titans two Nedney field goals, but the Ravens get the only touchdown in the half, and it comes from the special teams. And here's Ed Reed coming through, blocks the punt, and makes a very athletic move, picking up the ball, 11-yard touchdown. Doesn't celebrate too early. Steve McNair drops back the pass. He looks for Drew Bennett. Drew Brennan getting that back inside. Nice run down the five-yard line. But you can't make a mistake like this when you get down inside the 10. Steve McNair gets no! picked off. Oh, Big mistake man. by him. Brad Scott yeah. comes up with the interception. The Ravens up 10-6. Wow. Okay, the Browns just picked the Saints in the end zone. Look at Jacksonville. Got a field goal wide at the end of the half to make it 7-5. We're not Cowboys. showing any highlights, are we? That's exciting. Seven, no, you don't no, want no, any? All right, Galloway game. got a touchdown in that one. And meanwhile, Warner returns, completes his first 15 passes, including a touchdown toss to Troy Edwards. And the Bears and the Lions, Chandler to Marcus Robinson for a touchdown. Moments ago, an update from Giant Stadium, and it's Chad Pennington of the Jets leading him on a beautiful drive to open the second half, a little play action, and he's going to find Lavernius Coles. I'll tell you, look how wide open he is. You know, problems with the Bills on defense all year long, and it's shown itself again today. All right, Jets uh, won three straight and leading by three touchdowns. Thanks for being with us on the next Dell Halftime Report. CBS Sports presents the Nextel Halftime Report. Nextel, bringing you wireless solutions.